o bin blessed to me. This has been the most wonderful life I think I could have ever dreamed of. First of all, I never wanted to be a hundred. <laughs> They're old, but I'm not old. I'm young in spirit. And so happy you have no idea. I don't think anybody had that can believe it. But you're all so wonderful that John, my nephew, look at him, take a picture. <laughs> he said, Pam Alfie, we're going to have a party for you. I said, no way. I said, I can't plan anything. He said, you're not going to plan it. I'm planning this. She had a big shot. <laughs> so, I said, oh, okay. So he said, all right, you have to give me all this. Well, I had no trouble with that. I know everybody by heart. <laughs> just everyone. There's something special about each one of you. And you're all either a helmet up or a powers or a swabby. And it just means the world to me that you belong to me. Because I, Dave and I had no children. But you were all my children. And I look at them, Paul, and remember, and you know, that's the, I had a brother and a sister, and a mother and a father that were fantastic. But my sister, my sister had three wonderful children. There was Jane, and then there was Bill, who looks just like my father. <laughs> oh, God bless my father. Oh, I, because I adored my father. My mother, I loved her dearly, but she was marvelous. But my father, he was, he was something special. And then there was Paul. And Dotsie was so good. She always let her kids come in the summertime to see their grandparents. And that was the best thing because then I got to see them because I had no kids. And they, you know, we went everywhere. Jane wanted to see the Statue of Liberty. And so I took Jane to see the Statue of Liberty. <laughs> and then we were starting to go up, and I have claustrophobia, and I couldn't go up. So I said to the lady in front of me, I said, would you take my niece up to the top? But Jane wouldn't go. She said, no, and then she was cranky. <laughs> Imagine that. Yeah. But you know who took my Jane up to the top? And those days you could take them up to the top, was my mother. She went up. Oh, she she was. She did everything. She was just wonderful. And then Bill came and, uh, with his, with his friend, <laughs> and and then the Paul came with his friend Dunk. I think it was Dunk. Mm -hmm. And they were, you know, fooling around. They were only kids, and they got playing ball in my living room on Foster mm -hmm. Avenue. And then all of a sudden, pop, goes a lamp down, one of my good ones. <laughs> and I said to him, Paul, I asked you not to play, play ball, so they, they felt bad. Yes. But that was it. But anyway, I still, <laughs> I still have the lamp. I paste it together, but not well. But I still have the lamp. But every time I look at it, and it goes on at night, I think, Oh, those two kids, they look so wonderful. And then Jane came with her girlfriend. <laughs> they were sort of grown up then. And they went to, to see the show in New York. Camelot. Mm. And another girl was supposed to go with them. So one of their friends from college, Miami. What was it? Miami. Mm -hmm. University of Miami of Ohio. <laughs> but the girl couldn't come, so I went along with them to New York to see Camelot. And then when they came home, they laid on 
we had the record. And we put the record on the girl. So, oh, 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 you know how teenagers do. Oh, they were just thrilled with that show. And I was too. That time it was uh, Burton in that. Oh, and why wouldn't you go, oh, 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 you know, Richard Burton. But anyway, let me see. And then, that's Gussie's three kids, yeah. And then there was my brother, but he was a dad. He was the smart one in the family. <laughs> and my mother was bound and determined and that he was going to college. So, and he, anyway, he went to college, he went to Alabama at the University, and he wanted to be an engineer. And he became an engineer, and he became a, what did he get? He got his, not Masters? Got, no, he was a, Electrical? No, he got his masters. And that was a big day for my family. And we went all went up to tell him and he said, they did. Because I stayed in the store, took my father's places in the ice cream store. But it, it was so wonderful that I lost my train of thought. Uh, that was my, my brother Herman. And then Herman, he was bashful. We were all trying to get a girl so a woman to have parties. And he, he, he never liked anybody. But then, one day, Dave, my Dave, he had a, had a cousin, and her name was Jo Carr. And she was a nurse in his hospital. And she said, and she used to come because to the parties and stuff. Those days we always had parties, got together. <laughs> and uh, she said, Dave, I have just the girl for your brother. And it was Doris Maxwell. She was a nurse in the hospital there. And he brought her, he, she brought Doris, and we, we brought Herman to the party, and something clicked. Like it clicked with you two. And like it clicked with me the minute I saw my Dave, I knew that was him. But uh, anyway, it clicked and they got married, and then they had these two wonderful children. Dorothy, my fir the first niece in the family, the first girl, the first grandchild. And oh, it was that a birthday. It was marvelous. <laughs> and then Richard was born. But Dorothy lived, but my brother died when he was 40. He had heart trouble. And then Doris went up to Canada to live in Canada with her, with her mother and her brother. And they had a farm in, in Gananapu, Canada. And then, lo and behold, Richard was run over by a bicycle when he was 13 years old. So he lost this beautiful young boy. 13 years old. It was heartbreaking. And then after a while, Dorothy came back with her mother to New York to live. And she graduated. And then she went up to Canada to, to, uh, to, be, to go to college. And while she was in college, she met Ray. And now she has this family, this fabulous family. Well, I think they're still here. There he is. <laughs> Dorothy, firstborn. Secondborn was Robert, the love of my life. And he's just so dear to me. And then there's Catherine. And now she was another one. She was just a darling, you know. But she was the spoiled one of the family. <laughs> <laughs> but she was a dear girl. But anyway, she now.
now has this wonderful little girl there, Alexandra. And Alexandra, when she was going to be born, I said she was nine years old on the 19th of October. And I said, Catherine, hold her, hold her until the 22nd. I want to have a born. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, and then, did I get the, the two, the two, uh, I, well, then I was the third kid. No, was that it? Yeah. yeah. I was uh, my brother and my sister, yeah, Daffy and then me. And then, because I met, I was 17, and on May 2nd, 1931, I was a rainbow girl. I don't know if you know what that is, but yeah. Father had, or you also had to be amazing. Am I talking too long? No, no this is no, great. This is awesome. and, and, uh, it's a documentary. <laughs> and your father has to be either, or you have, either have to have a father who was amazing, or um, <coughs> you had to have an uncle who was amazing. And my dad, his father was amazing, so he was a demolay. Well, the rainbow girls, well, this group, it's a group of girls from 13 to 18. And it was just great for the young girls. So we were put on a show one night at dinner, like a supper show. And we put on a show, and I was Minnie the Moocher. <laughs> oh, God. But before the, before the show went on, I was out in the audience, and uh, I saw this fellow coming in. Oh, is he something? Dumb kid, 17 years old. And I looked at him, and I winked at him. <gasps> I couldn't help it. I, I really scandalous. And I never wanted a guy before, you know, but he was, he was. So later, when the show was over, we had our supper. We had music, because we had this musical show. And Dave came, this young man came over and said, May I have a dance? And I said, Of course. <laughs> <laughs> so he took me home. He took me, he wanted to take me home. And my mother was there that night, of course. And so she asked some of the ladies, Does anybody know this guy? This guy, you know? And they said, Oh, yes, he's, he's a nice boy. He comes from a very nice family. <laughs> So he asked to bring me home. So we did come home, and we uh, we went to his friend's house, was also a demolay, with another girl. And we had the mother came down and made cocoa for us and cookies, homemade cookies. And and then when we were going home, we went to um, it was trolley trolley cars there. And instead of trolley cars, there was a taxi stand there, so he took the taxi. He didn't have any money, but I don't know how he did it. But anyway, we two, he took me home, and when, it was not far, just about two miles. And here in the, in the taxi cab, he stood up and said, can I see you, can I see you? Oh, sure. So when we get home, and he leaves me at the door, he was like, I said, I don't do that. No. I said, I just met you. <laughs> so little did I know I was going to marry him. Oh, but what a guy. What a guy. <laughs> you know, he was just wonderful. He really, everybody that saw him liked him. He was sort of on the wild side. Not wild, but nice, you know, fun. And so we got married when I was here. To me on my, for my 21st birthday, and we got married when I was 22. But it's been a lovely, lovely party for the whole kids, all those years. And I really, oh, I didn't get to, I didn't get to this guy.
stand in a public area. You know, I had, my mother had <coughs> three brothers. From the, and there was Uncle, Uncle Hunt, Uncle Albert, he was the youngest. Then came Uncle Hunt, and then came Uncle Henry Helmer. And that's the grandfather of those two girls over there. And Linda and Lisa. And that was my mother's favorite brother because her mother died when she was three years old. So she had a, she had a, a stepmother. And later, as it went on for years, they had 18 more children. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Oh, yeah. Oh, mm -hmm. I didn't all live, but I would say 16 of them lived. No, no, 14. I think there were about 15 or so all in all. But anyway, my mother had to, was not treated as nice as she would have liked to be. So when <coughs> she got, said when she got married, she was never going to polish another pair of shoes because in Germany they always polish shoes every day. Everything had to be sparkling. So that was, and then when uh, uh, Henry got married to Tana Margaret, then Tana Margaret had those two girls over there, Linda and, and Lily. Lily. And Lily. 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 Lily and Ernie. Lillian and Ernie, that's yeah. right, that's, yeah. the, that's the one their yeah. grandfather. Yeah. That's right. And, uh, and then she had those two girls, and then they're just as dear to me as any of my family. So they got married, and that's the result of Linda and Bill Bostick's family, is those three swell boys over there. <laughs> that one is, Brent is the oldest, and then comes uh, Cole and, uh, and Ryan. Cole and Ryan. Ryan. Cole and Ryan. Look at them, aren't they adorable? <laughs> so that was another one. And I think in the Schwabi, in the Helen of family, that's it. But that can the Schwabi family, and that's those two ladies there, Doris Hicks and Alma Rush. Those were my cousins' grandchildren. Daughter and daughter, my cousin's daughter, two daughters. Yeah. One was Elsie. One was Elsie Rush, and the other was William Rush. And so they're here today. And this is Doris Hicks. I haven't seen her in 50 years, but she heard of through the grapevine that was popular in Chicago, so she wanted to come. And that's her daughter. She's a, a, a professor, I think. Is that right? So I just met her today. But then, let me see. Then came the power trip. And what a family. What a family. My day was so proud, and so was I. You have no idea. This was our life, you know. And not having children of our own, our family was very important to us. And so, John, it was John Pell. Dave, John was the, no, Catherine was the oldest. And She's gone. And John Howard married Harriet. And they had this boy. Where is he? There he is. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, he was the love of our life, too, because he was very special. So, and then, and then sadly, we lost Harriet, his mother, when John was just. I hope there's a picture there of when he graduated from grade school, John, and his mother and father. And they were just so proud of that boy. Oh gosh, it was it was disgusting. <laughs> <laughs> you know, it was really, you know, they thought they
that boy was the only boy in the world, and rightfully so. He is, has been so good to me. But luckily, I'm pretty good on my own, you know. <laughs> I've lived alone for 99 years. But wait a minute, I have to tell you. I have to. So John married this girl, Helen. Helen. And they met in college. And it was sort of a nice romance, wasn't it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it worked out. <laughs> yeah, it was sort of a nice it worked romance. out. Because we went to their wedding and it was, it, it, it was just, oh, I don't know, it was just perfect. And it was the night before we all went up to Connecticut, because she came from Connecticut. And a team, 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 and all these people were in the hotel, motel. We all, we all went and stayed in the motel, and we had the best time ever. The next morning was this glorious October morning. It was unreal. It was just perfect. And they got married. And it was just wonderful. And they had some kids, too. Number one kid was, there she is, Jennifer. <laughs> Jennifer. Oh. And she was born on Dave's birthday. Oh, what a day. That was just wonderful. October, March 31st. Then they called to tell us that Jennifer was born. They were just so happy. So <coughs> Jennifer, she, there's Jennifer and her family and her dear husband. There he is, John Gout. But unfortunately, John lost his father this week. It was a dreadful thing, and I just am so grateful that he came, although I would have, I wouldn't have liked him not to come, because when I lost my parents, it was just terrible. But I know your father was a precious guy in your heart, wasn't he? But here, they have this fabulous family. <laughs> All right, stand up. Where's Edward? This is Edward. <laughs> and then, stand up. This is going to be on the news. And then the <laughs> um, Winifred. Stand up, Winifred. Stand up. Yeah, just stand adorable. Up, just stand up. Look at that. Yeah. She's the dancer. And then there is David Powers Gauss. <laughs> How about that? He was named after his. And what, oh, when Jennifer told me that, I didn't stop crying for a day. But it was just so wonderful. And then comes the baby, and that's Annie. And she also is a dancer. And she just, and she's just so <laughs> She's so graceful. <laughs> okay. Now, my day had a I told you about this wonderful cousin that he loved. Jen. Her name was Jo Carr. And then she was married, and she had um, she was married to Frank Brax. And Frank Brax had these two kids. I, well, I shouldn't call them kids. They two children. First was born Jack. Jack Brax. And Jack couldn't be with us today because he's down in Texas. But then he had a daughter. And here she is. She's Joyce, stand up, Joyce Cole. <laughs> Joyce oh, is Cole. <laughs> yeah, no. And, but Joyce just loved Uncle Dave. Oh, and she would often come to the house and stay on weekends. Well, I, you know, it, it, it was just wonderful. And you don't forget those things. But I am, I think I'm finished, but I have one more thing to say. I was alone all these years, nine years, uh, for, well, no, for 32 years I'm a widow. Oh, but Dave smoked. So he killed himself. I didn't smoke. 
and he died when he was 68 years old. It was just terrible. He looked like an old man. And here he was, this handsome, virile, sturdy, grand husband. And I was so proud of him, absolutely so proud of him. I loved him dearly. And then I wanted, and I was alone for all those years. And we had a cottage in Upper Greenwood Lake, but then I, when I got to be uh, 85, I couldn't take care of it anymore because it had an acre of land and I had to do all the work. So I stayed there until I was 85 and then this new place opened up in Fall Legal and I took a look at it and I thought this would be pretty nice for me. So at 85, I bought myself a three room condo for $100,000. <laughs> I always bought cash. <laughs> it's not to be cash, or I didn't buy it. If I didn't have the money, I didn't buy it. But anyway, I bought this lovely three room truck, and I, I'm there now 15 years. And it's the best place I ever have lived in. It was so lovely. And I know so many people in there, but. None of them are my real friends. You can't do without your real friends, your old friends. But anyway, I lived here, and when I got to be almost 99, I wasn't feeling so well. I have a problem. I don't have enough salt in my system. I have to take salt pills. And then if I don't have my salt, I pass out and I have to go to the hospital. So I was in the hospital, and, and uh, when I came home, I was pretty weak. And that was in Ju July, or, no, it was in August, I think. I did not have enough salt. It was just crazy, but that's me. But anyway, I, uh, I was home, and I really, before that, I managed fine, but I wasn't up to it anymore. And a new girl, of course, the whole moved in, and her name was Kathy. And she put it, we have a monthly newspaper, and she put an ad in there, if anybody would like to maybe go shopping for them or take them to the doctor, I'll be glad to do it for a fee. So I called her in one day, and I said, Kathy, I said, I really could use a little help. Would you like to help me? She said, I would love to, Elsie. So a bond was made. I had a new angel in the medicine. She takes care of me, and she is absolutely top-notch. So now I have this lovely young woman. She's only 65, <laughs> and she helps me out. And I am so grateful to her. So now I can really manage again. And since this last bout I had with my no saw business, I thought I was going to die a month ago. And I said to my doctor, Dr. McDermott, I'm going to die. And I can't make my husband's birthday party. <laughs> Guess what? <laughs> he said, you, know, you can't die because your vitals are too good. <laughs> so I said, well, why do I feel so terrible? I think I couldn't get out of bed. I couldn't sleep. I was a mess. So I said, I'm going to call that big shot uh, expert uh, doctor that you brought in. Because since he gave me that medicine, it doesn't work. So I called him. I called the office and I said, would you please have Dr. Obligato call me? And then they said, I'll give him your message. Well, he called me the next day. And he said, Mrs. Powell, what's wrong? I said, I'm sick. I think I'm going to die. And it's all because of this medicine that you gave me. So 
So he said, what medicine did I give you? I said, I don't know what medicine you gave me. I take them what you give me. So he said, I'll call Dr. McDermott. So he did. And that night, he called Dr. McDermott and gave me the medicine. You got your own medicine back again. And here I am, <laughs> all ready. And I feel like a million. John, do you want to mention John and his fiance? I think you oh. missed that one. Oh, that's right. <laughs> you would feel horrible. Oh, yes, I would. <laughs> because you have the one more. Oh, wait a minute. Well, that's all right. Out of all of those, that's not bad. That's not bad at all. <laughs> <laughs> no. But, but, you know, John have Oh, that's right. After I got to you, I forgot the other. Mm -hmm. <laughs> then she came John. <laughs> and John, of course, is one of our favorite guys. You know? And every time I'd be on the phone with them, say, How's the love life? <laughs> Just like with Robert, he's not married. <laughs> <laughs> I always say, I have no business that, but that, I'm, I'm their aunt, so I can uh, get ready and I can get ready. So anyway, he'd say, that's a good mom for them, but I have to do something for them. I would, I would love to have somebody to love. And the next thing I know, he met Meredith. <laughs> And I, this is the first time I met him, but she's pretty charming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy, did he ever get a beauty. And she sings. Mm -hmm. And she sings in a choir in the Marble, is it the Marble Collegiate mm -hmm. Church? And she's a Dutch reformist, and that's what John is, you know. So this all, and you know what she told me, she said, when I spoke with her on the phone, she said, I said, I'm so, I'm so happy you're in our family, because you're pretty special. She said, you know, when the, I was going to be, be talking a couple of times, John and I, the first time, three hours. And, and I said, yeah. And then the next time, we were going to, they were going to meet. And so he had, he lives in, they live in uh, Astoria. I was going to say Woodside because that's where all my other family was. But anyway, she was waiting for him, and he came down the steps there, because they have this elevator line out there. And she saw this guy, she said, oh, my goodness, Tim. What? Oh, God. <laughs> so it's made in heaven. Mm -hmm. And then there's Mary, and, um, and wait a minute, uh, Vinny. Mary and Vinny, but they live out in um, St. Louis, Missouri, and they couldn't come today. But they would have loved to be here. So, did I meet anybody else? Did I meet? I think you got everybody. Did I get everybody you? Yeah. yeah. Oh, I didn't say about your two kids. Oh, that's okay. That's a whole nother generation. We're, that we don't need that. We're okay. But anyway, that's it. And I thank you all for coming. I, and this John, that he made this party. Oh, thank you, John. Thank you, John. Thank you, John.